Hello everyone, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel, Jen M. Bowman. This is a channel that's basically a crafty show and tell of the things I have been getting up to in my craft room and beyond. Today is Thursday, January 27th, almost at the end, which is kind of nice. Um, but it's okay, January's been a pretty good month. I've got a lot of finishes this month, which is why I wanted to come on a little bit sooner than later, just so I wouldn't be talking forever. So, um, I guess we might as well just get started. I'm probably going to be having the odd sip of tea while I'm drinking this, just because my son and I just got back from the big mall and I'm more than parched. And I got more than enough exercise schlepping all over that place. But anyway, it's like a, a two year or a two times a year endeavor and uh, we were hoping to hit some January sales. But anyway, it has nothing to do with crafting. Okay, so I have finishes for cross stitch, for crochet, and quilting slash sewing. So I guess let's get started. Uh, cross stitch first. So the last time I was on doing a video, I was working on my snowman trio, and that's a, a by Stitchy Kitty. This is an old one. I'm not sure if this is still available or not. And after an 11 year uh, gap between from starting the first one, I decided to complete the last one and turn it into a bell pull. So here we have it. So this was the one I was working on last time. And this is how I finished it off. And so I use this beautiful bell pull hardware from Custom Cuttings. And I, again, I will link the Facebook page below. So there's the topper. Isn't he sweet? So this is the one I completed in 2011. This was this year. And this guy down there was 2012. So finally, they're all together. And I just used fabric left over from the last quilt that I showed you, that winter one, with the snowflakes. And these are just kind of on here temporarily. Now, they are holding little buttons. Um, just another button company, they're little like birds, hearts, and snowflakes. I just picked up the buttons on my way home today, so I still have to stitch those on. And that'll be complete, complete. I can't believe it. So, very pleased with it. I kind of misjudged my cutting here. I'm a little bit close, but honestly, just to have it up on the wall after all this time is good enough for me. So Snowman Trio Bell Pull is complete. But now I can give you a closer look. So there's Chili. I love their little um, fair, like fair isle, fair isle hats. And there's Millie, so she's the one I just finished, and she will be holding some hearts. And this is Willie. And I think he's supposed to be holding birds. Cute. So happy to finally have that complete. It's been way too long. Okay, see if I can put that later. Um, what else did I finish? I was working on Evelyn Cunningham, and this is from the Loose Feathers Winter Booklet. So I was working on this. My initial inspiration was, I like in this picture how the letters are sort of like cool, blues and browns. So I knew I wanted to keep that. I really like the pomegranate tree, but I wanted to change it and I was going to leave the bottom off. So this is what I ended up with. So I kept the blue and brown letters. Now these are my own colors not what was called for. 
And instead of stitching pomegranates, I wanted to put some snowflake charms. And you can see that. They probably could have been a little bit bigger, but I just wanted to continue with the whole cool blue sort of icy thing um, feel. And so I had stitched down to here, but in order for it to fit into an eight by 10 frame better, I stitched down to here and then I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to put in there. So I just started Snow Garden from the alphabet in the book and I had an extra snowflake charm. So, I mean, it kind of turned out, well, I mean, it, it pretty much turned out how I pictured that it would. I don't know that it really works, but it's, it's finished now. And I mean, if I ever want to just go stitch the original, I can still stitch the original. But there we have it. And I'd thought about doing, I don't know, Snowflake Garden, but after I had charted it and I mean, when I got to here, I felt like I was, I, in my head, I was finished, but I knew I had to do more. So then I charted this and then was going to stitch it the next day. And I thought, well, maybe I should change it to Snowflake Garden or Winter Garden, but I had already charted that and I didn't want to do any more work. So I just did that. So there we have Snow Garden, mostly by Blackbird Designs, some of it by me. And it just goes, I think, very well in this frame. And that's stitched on a 28 count white opalescent because I wanted that sparkly, just wintry feel to it. So that was my second cross stitch finish. My third was the miniature urns from Jeanette Douglas uh, designs. She's doing that free series this year. I didn't want to do mine on a whole big piece of fabric because I have other pieces like that. So I knew I wanted probably a pin keep and I wanted it to be, I don't know, on the fancier side. So I had this idea in my head and this turned out absolutely nothing like that. I don't know, I may restitch it, I'm not really sure, but this is what ended up with. So this is the pineapple welcome. I left off the border. I used, I believe I used the called for DMC for this one. And I was looking for a pineapple charm to stick here or a bead. And I found one on the Michaels website and so I went to go get it, but it was way too big. So anyway, this is what I have for this one. And my idea is to just have a basket with these pin keeps in them just sitting around. So happy with that. This was a one evening stitch, which is very encouraging, especially when you have as many whips as I do. So there we have pineapple welcome. And my next finish is, let's see, okay. Christmas Rose, also from Blackbird Designs. It's from this book. This is my finish. It's stitched on 16 count Wren by Picture This Plus. I used some of the called for colors. Some of them are just my own. And I'm pleased with how that turned out. I think perhaps maybe that 20 could be pushed over there, but I'm not going to take it out now. So I'm happy with this one because one of my sort of goals, I don't even know if I mentioned that, was I wanted to stitch one of the Blackbird Christmas samplers every year, or if it's a larger one, uh, take two years to do it. So this is the first one that I stitched. And yeah, and this fits perfectly in an 8x10 frame, but I just need to lace it onto a board, a piece of mat board, and then I can put it in. Uh, what else can I say about this? If you are going to stitch this one, I will just have you know I use pretty much a whole skein of this red. I believe it's Red Rocks, and this is on 16 count. So if you're doing it on an 14 or 28, you might need more than that. I literally had about six inches left of the floss. But there. So Happy to have that done. And my last cross stitch finish 
is hot cocoa. From Shannon Christine Designs. Get my tea out of the way. So quite pleased with that one. Now, I don't love stitching on black, and I don't think my stitches look very great, but when you're, you know, standing back, I, I think it looks pretty fabulous. Now, part of me wishes I had stitched it on the brown, sort of like the chocolatey brown, because I think that looks really nice too. But, I mean, I also really love this. And this will fit in an 8x12, no, 8x10, sorry, 8x10 frame. And it will leave you know, enough of the fabric around before the frame that'll make sort of like just a natural border. I think it looks really good. So again, I have to get a piece of mat board and lace that up. So it'll be all ready to go for next year. Now, after all of those finishes, I thought I would treat myself to a new start, but do you ever get that when you it's like you have that void and then you don't know what you're going to stitch. So I thought I would break from my rotation and just stitch something new. Now I can't show you the whole thing. This is called Vintage Valentine and this is from Cross Stitch and Needlework March 2013 from Jessica Franchuk. And I'm just going to hold it back here. So that's what it looks like. It's just a, a sampler of Valentine motifs. And that's as far as I got on that guy. Uh, I don't know, Valentine's Day, it's funny. I have so many Valentine's charts, which really surprised me when I was doing my big sort out a couple of years ago. But I rarely stitch them because I like to stitch winter designs in January and then all of a sudden February is there and I have to make Valentine's Day cards. And then, uh, then it's like it's over. Like, I feel like I never have enough time to do Valentine's stitching. So I don't know if this year's going to be any different or not. But I would like to continue working on this. And then I also wanted to start the Abyssidarian series this year. And I've gone back and forth about 50 times of whether I'm going to start them or if I'm just going to, you know, focus on the things that I already have going on. Because part of me is like, just be disciplined and get to work on this, on what you have started. And then another part of me is, well, I really love this stuff and I want to get started so I can, you know, get finished. But I don't know. So we'll see. The next time I record, I'm sure there's going to be something totally different. I don't know. Maybe I'll have decided by then. Who knows? Okay, so that was it for cross stitch. Oh, and this is the, um, what the hot cocoa cover sheet looks like and I bought that as a download from the Shannon Christine website and yeah um so January is almost over going into February I, I still wouldn't mind doing something Valentine ish but I was also thinking that maybe January would be kit month because I would like to just do a focus on some of my kits and then the rest of this week, I had planned to take the whole week to stitch on Christmas things, and um, but once I finished all these things, I just kind of wanted a break from cross stitch. So um, I might do some Christmas stitching, you know, tonight until the end of January, and see. And then probably in February, I'm going to have a certain theme and just stick to that. And right now, I'm thinking it's going to be kits, but um, I'm not sure. Guess you'll find out. So that was it for cross-stitching, I did some crocheting. So I finished this scarf, and this is called the Plot Thickens Scarf, and it's from C.J. Brady Designs. Let's see. I can't... So it's beautiful yarn. It's from Ravenswood Fiber Company. And if you can see in this pattern, it's got this lovely twist to it. And it's reversible. It's the same in the front and the back. So lovely blues and silvers, very much the color of my landscape this month. 
it was super quick to do. Like it took me less than two weeks. And so this is the Ravenswood Fiber Company. And this one was called Follow Your Dreams. Now she usually does specialty colorways. So I don't know if you'd have the same, if you would be able to find that same colorway or not. So 400 meters of fingering, this is all I had left. I would not have been able to do another repeat on this. And in fact, on the increase section, I did one less increase than it called for because I found with her patterns, I've run into that trouble before as I do the e increase, I'm doing the decrease, and then I run out of yarn before I'm finished. So I did one less increase and it worked out perfectly. I only had this much left. And yeah, I love the size of it. It's not too big. I love the colors, goes with everything. And once I got the hang of the pattern, it was super easy to just, you know, pick it up, do a row, put it down, pick it up, do the next row. So I, I think it's a four row repeat, four row repeat. So I would try to, if when I was sitting down, I'd try to do a whole repeat. But after a while, you just remember. So it's good to get back into crocheting again because I did miss it. So after this was completed, I finally picked up the blanket I'm making for my daughter. So I've had the yarn and I just couldn't decide on the pattern. So I finally decided on this, the Janice blanket from Felted Button. This is a reversible blanket, which is kind of fun. So this is where I am so far. These are the colors. So I'm going from dark to light and light to dark. And that'll be the sequence. So this is what the one side looks like. And this is what the other side looks like. So I thought that was kind of neat. And yeah, I figured last night, it takes me about an hour to do each, not each row, but each little color sequence. So I think only 36 more hours to go <laughs> before I get to the border. But it's okay. It's a nice nighttime sort of project. And I love the colors. It's just nice and um, springish and bright, but they're not too springish, so I can really just work on this all year if I need to. But good to get into that. I'm going to have a million T1 ends to weave in. That's okay. And sewing. I've been doing so much sewing this month, which is great because I love to sew. So I got this cute little kit for a fabric basket. I had to take my husband to the walk-in clinic, which is conveniently right next door to the quilt store. So this is called the Petty Four Basket. That's what that looks like. And it was a kit, so everything came in, in it. The hardest part was deciding which uh, fabrics I wanted. So this is the little basket. Outside, I just I picked it because it's aqua. So it's just a cute little thing. It's kind of fun. Right now, I'm just keeping my quilting feet in it, but I think I'm going to use it for um, the little clips, like wonder clips, but they're not made by Clover. And then I wanted to make on the same trip to the quilt store, I picked up two little mini charm packages because I wanted to make something sort of Valentine ish. And I chose, I wonder if I have the pattern. I don't think I do. So this was a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. Anyway, so I made a little table topper. So it's kind of a Valentine-ish one. And I'm trying to think, if you go on the Fat Quarter website to their free patterns, it's under the pre-cuts. So you can use this way or this way. So this is probably my favorite French general collection. I mean, I like the reds and I like the bone colors, but I love that it has the pink in it. So after this video is done, or the 1st of February, I'm going to put this downstairs on our table. But I just wanted something, you know, a little bit of color pop on there as well. So that was fun. I mean, that took... I don't know, maybe two days or something. 
And then the biggest thing I finished was another quilt. Now this one actually is a throw size. I did read the instructions this time and I used, I had two half jelly rolls from Joann's. I think I bought them the early part of 2020. So I believe this pattern is called a rail fence and I did it offset. And that's what it looks like. My normal, like how I've been hanging up my quilts behind me before I can't, I'm, I'm working on another sewing project and so that vantage point is blocked. But this one isn't so big. So, you know, that's it. Just sewing the strips together. I did it pretty much all random, except I did just make sure that the all of the yellow-green strips ran down the middle. So I love the colors. They're just nice and spring-like as well. And I did this little aqua polka dot binding. And then it's just backed with a sheet I got at the thrift store. And I did it offset. Now the pattern is called the Moda Real Time, R-E-E-L, Time Chill Out. And that is also, I believe, on the Fat Quarter site. Now, when it came time to cutting the triangles, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. I mean, I could, but the dimensions were so awkward. And then I noticed that the pattern had originally been done by somebody in Denmark. So then I knew that they had obviously converted from centimeters to inches and they just, it didn't make any sense. It was like cut it 15.39 inches. So I found this really great website that tells you how to cut your triangles for, if you're doing offset blocks, um, it'll tell you what size you need to cut your squares and then you cut them in half based on your block size. And if they don't have the block size you're using, they tell you the math formula to use. So I'm going to link that down below because I found that so helpful. And I really like quilts that have offset blocks. So I will definitely be using that site in the future. But yeah, I will link that below just in case you would like that information too. So there we go. That was two quilts in one month or two finishes in one month. So yeah, um, I haven't started another quilt. I've started a throw. That's my next sewing project and I'm using these old handkerchiefs. So I'm making a rag quilt. So yesterday I ironed all my handkerchiefs. I did all my math. I cut out all of my squares and flannel and everything. I'm not putting batting in this quilt. I'm going to use two layers of flannel in the middle. So it's going to be fabric on the back, two pieces of flannel, a muslin, and then the handkerchief. And then I will do all the clipping and everything and hope this works out. These are pretty sturdy, but I've had this on the back burner for, I mean, it feels like years and years, but it's been, I don't know, it's been a couple years anyway. So I finally decided I'm sick and tired of tripping over the bag with all of the stuff in it every time I open the spare room closet. So if I just made it, then I won't, the bag won't fall over every time I open the door. So. I'm hoping this will be finished in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. It's kind of one of those projects that I think it's going to be super quick and then I'll do a little bit and then put it aside. But yeah, that's it. I mean, that was a lot, but that's what I've been working on the last couple of weeks. I think my last update was on the 11th. So yeah, that's what I've been working on and um, those are my future plans. Yes. So anyway, thank you for dropping in today. Um, yeah, thank you for all your comments on my last video. I appreciate it. And if you ever have questions, I would probably just email me. Uh, you can leave a comment in the video and I will catch it if it's fairly recent to the video I just made, but otherwise I won't see it. 
Um, but yeah, so the sun has come out today and it's a little bit warmer, which is nice. So I'm going to go take my cup of tea and go do something fun like watch Flosstube or quilting videos. So anyway, thanks for joining me today and until next time, happy days, friends.